Every day, somewhere in the world, chairlifts are running across snow-covered mountains. It's September in South America, and the U.S. men's alpine ski team has traveled 6,000 miles in search of the perfect conditions to continue preparation for the upcoming World Cup season. That was our first run. Solid, man. It's windy, but it's good. We're in Caracas, Chile, for our annual speed trip to Southern Hemisphere. Typically, we go to Portillo. It's been a great place for us year after year. Unfortunately, this year, they didn't get as much snow as they normally do. So we uh, came down, looked for a different venue, found Caraco, this great place, huge mountain, tremendous potential here. We've actually had great training. You know, normally, this is a camp we do a little bit further north in Chile. This is a place we've never been, and you know, it's been great. We, we've got a huge variety of, of training. There's a lot of different hills. You know, we've been mainly focusing on downhill and Super G when the weather cooperates and supplement GS in there when it's not quite as nice out. We're waking up really early. The coaches love getting on the hill before the sun rises. So <laughs> we wake up at yeah, 5.30, whatever, go have some breakfast, leave for the hill. And usually our first ride up, it's before the sun rises. So we get to catch the sunrise on the way up, which is kind of cool. It's kind of nice being up there all alone. No public is on the hill yet. And then after that, we, we have our training session. It's pretty intense normally. We do anywhere between five to 10 runs of downhill or Super G, whatever we're doing that day. And then after that, we head back and have some lunch, um, unwind for a bit, and then we go do dry land training. It's like a, the second session of the day. And then we go do a core workout, and then some stretching, and then physical therapy, and then video with the coaches to go over the day, and then dinner, and then go to bed and do it all over again. This camp, we had one great week when we first got here, really good training for about five, six days. And then a big weather front just moved in. Weather's not always perfect, you know, so we chase the snow around the world, so we got to expect there's going to be some days that are going to be pretty blustery. <laughs> we're ski racers, you know, we're used to battling the elements. You know, this is the struggle, this is the pursuit of perfection in the hardest conditions we've ever faced. We're in an outdoor sport, and it can happen in races, too. So sometimes it's not a bad thing to, to deal with bad weather and train in it. Weather and snow conditions are just two variables that can affect a racer's speed. Equipment is another. Every day I train, I have a bunch of pairs of skis that you can see behind me. Those are a lot, most of my skis, and there's a lot of different things we can test with the bindings and also with the boots. The factory will throw out a new ski that's got a little bit wider tail and skinnier tip and maybe it's thicker and they've used a different kind of wood or something. All that stuff is just little things that might make us a tenth faster on the downhill course. I'm always working on my aerodynamics and tactics. We're always doing that every day we train. Our coaches set a challenging course and we have to figure it out. Some guys of note that really stepped up, I thought, Steven Nyman, he's skiing with a much better balanced position. He's got tremendous upper body stability, which is something that we've been trying to get him to do for years. It's kind of funny being the old guy. It's kind of me and Marco and Bodie and, and Ted, we've been around for a while, but uh, there's the young guys that are coming up and it's nice having these young guys around because they're all fired up and I can feed off of their energy. It's a unique scenario because we're a team, we're a family, we travel together, we're best buds, but we also need to have that competition. I root for them, but I also want to beat them. We're kind of building off of a pretty successful year last year. We had a, a lot of guys that skied well, and I think, you know, really it's building bigger and stronger and faster. And now, everyone has their skis pointed toward the upcoming FIS Alpine World Ski Championships. World Championships at Vail is going to be amazing. Uh, uh, that, that hill is just incredible. Uh, Birds of Prey is world class and one of the best. I am like really psyched that it's at home. We've raced on the Birds of Prey a bunch of times. I mean, I've been racing there since 2004, basically, so a long, long time for speed. 
it's really a second to none. I mean, it's one of the most fun tracks out there in Giant Slalom. It's a great hill as well. A hill I've had a lot of success on. And then, you know, Slalom, we've had some races there. My first podium in the World Cup was in a Slalom in, in Beaver Creek, so it holds a lot of good memories for me. It's been a successful speed session in South America, and with training behind them, it's time for the U.S. men's alpine ski team to pack their bags and head to Europe for the beginning of the World Cup season.